Hey friends, and welcome back to Dad's Bedtime Stories. Tonight we're going to start off where we left off in the last episode. Basically, we had a listener named Theo write in asking for a ninja meerkat planet. I put the whole thing together, uh, but I got a little carried away with the story, so uh, it was a to-be-continued sort of thing. If you haven't listened to the last one, I definitely suggest that you do that first because this one will make a lot less sense without it. And uh, if you remember, I think we ended off after a lot of ninja meerkat training, sitting under a tree, and meditating. If you liked the episode, don't forget to give us a rating and review, especially if you're listening on Apple Podcast. And, uh, you know, just share it with a friend if you can. It goes a really long way. Now, as usual, get as comfy as you can in those beds, close your eyes, and imagine yourself doing what the kid in the story does. As you open your eyes, you find yourself sitting comfortably under a gigantic tree. You remember, as you look down at your hands and your legs, that you've transformed yourself into a meerkat ninja. Your senses are still heightened, and you have a different way of moving around. After all that ninja meerkat training, you're feeling pretty comfortable in your ninja meerkat body. Alert, a voice says. Spaceship? Is that you? Yes. I have successfully located the missing sensei. Would you like me to share the location? Spaceship asks. Uh, of course. Put it on my watch. As you look down at your watch, a little map of the area appears. There's a blinking blue dot that represents where you are, and a blinking red dot that represents where the missing sensei is. We have to tell the others, you say to your other self. You know, the ninja version of you who's also become a meerkat. Yes. The ninja version of you says, We must tell them. You and ninja you head over to find Suki, the person who's been training you since you got here. Suki, you say, We believe we found the missing master. Master Takashi, she responds. Oh, I almost forgot about him. (laughs) Yes, well, we should go rescue him. Lead the way. You, Suki, Ninja you, and a whole bunch of other meerkat ninjas get all of their equipment together. They dress up in their darkest ninja armor, with their favorite ninja weapons. When everyone's ready, you meet at the edge of the training yard. Okay, thank you for gathering everyone. Um, These new young meerkat ninjas have something to share. Explain what you found, Suki says. You and Ninja you tell all of the other ninja a story about how you traveled through the woods following footprints and how you found Master Takashi there. The story isn't true, but you can't very well tell them that your highly advanced spaceship found out where he was for you. You draw a version of the map that you can see on your watch depicting the area where you are and where Master Takashi is being kept. I'll lead the way, you say. You and the other ninjas head out into the forest that surrounds the village. It's alive with the sound of rustling leaves and chirping birds, which you can still hear even better than you could before with your new meerkat senses. Your small, agile body weaves easily between the towering trees. Your senses are heightened, every sound, every scent is magnified, guiding you towards the hidden camp. Your ninja training has honed your instincts, and you move silently, blending into the shadows. Your heart races with anticipation as the rest of the ninja meerkats surround you, each one hiding a nearby tree. You know that time is of the essence. Master Takashi's life and the secrets of the Meerkat Ninja Academy hang in the balance. As you approach a dense thicket, you drop down on all fours, 
your tail helping to balance you as you crawl through the deep undergrowth. The scent of the other meerkats grows stronger as you, Ninja you, and all of the other meerkats slowly sneak up on the camp. And as you peer through the leaves, you can see a small clearing up ahead. The rogue ninja meerkats have set up camp here. You've found it. Their dark figures move slowly and quietly among the tents. In the center of the camp, bound to a sturdy post, is Master Takashi. His normally calm and composed face is lined with worry and exhaustion. Two rogue ninjas stand guard over him, their eyes scanning the perimeter for any sign of intruders. Nearby, Another group of meerkats is huddled around a fire, discussing their plans in hushed tones. You strain your ears and catch fragments of their conversation. We need to get the secrets of the academy, you hear one of them saying. With that knowledge, we can become the most powerful clan in the region. Master Takashi shifts uncomfortably his eyes narrowing in defiance. He'll never get the secrets from me, he says firmly. The knowledge of the academy is not meant for those who seek power for their own gain. You know you have to act quickly, using your keen senses and the skills you've acquired during your meerkat ninja training. You plan your approach. You focus on the guards first, silently communicating with the other version of you and all of the other meerkat ninjas. You move with stealth. Spaceship, you ask. Uh, did you make anything that can help put these guys to sleep? Yes, Spaceship says. Your sword can be put in sleep baton mode. It can? You slowly and quietly draw the sword from behind your back. You see a button on it that says, Sleep Mode. As you press the button, the edge of the sword flattens, getting rid of the sharp blade. And then, the blade seems to electrify itself with some form of energy. Cool, you realize. I believe the ninja version of you can do the same thing with their sword, Spaceship explains even further. You silently communicate with the others to stop, and you and the other version of yourself slowly sneak up on either side of the guards. With a small nod, you both jump out of the bushes, your swords high in hand, and you carefully hit the other guards with the sword. Instantly, you feel a burst of energy transfer into the little meerkats, and they fall gently to the ground and fall asleep. They immediately begin, well, kind of quietly snoring. You and the other meerkats slowly sneak into the camp, past the sleeping guards, you continue to crawl quietly across the ground, making as little noise as possible as you and all of your allies surround the meerkat ninjas who are currently talking around the campfire. After ensuring no other enemies are around, you and the other meerkats step out of the woods, each one drawing their favorite weapon the meerkats around the campfire suddenly stand up, reach for their swords, and hold them up against you too. You and Suki step forward. You can't have the secrets of the academy. They are ours. Now, give us our master back, and we may let you go, Suki explains. Let us go. You're never gonna let us go, the other meerkats respond. And with that, an epic ninja battle begins. 
We're talking a battle with crazy sword fights, really cool backflips and acrobatic maneuvers. We are talking a battle where the meerkats fight not only with their little tiny paws, but also their giant tails, blocking each other's strikes, jumping from side to side, leaping up in the air off of their tails and doing really sweet flips. Did, did, I already, did I already mention flips? Well, there's lots of flips. One by one, the meerkat ninjas from the other side begin to attack you. The first swings their sword down towards you. With ease, you duck out of the way, swing your tail around, and hit the other ninja's sword out of its hands. You immediately hit him with your shock sword, causing him to fall asleep. As you look to your left, you see the ninja version of yourself doing just about the same thing. Meerkat by meerkat, you and the ninja version of you put the majority of the rogue ninja meerkats to sleep. Your friends help a little too, but I mean, not as much as you. As the last rogue meerkat is knocked down on the ground beside the campfire, you point your shock sword towards him and ask, oh, What did you think you were going to accomplish here? Me? I thought I was going to get the secrets to the academy. That's all we've ever wanted. They've always been better fighters than us and, well, we're jealous. The meerkat explains. Uh, why don't you just go join the academy then? You ask. Why don't we join the academy? They'd never let us join. Uh, uh, yes, we would, Suki said. Takashi in the background confirms. Of course we would. We allow any ninjas willing to follow the rules. Uh, you, you would? The rogue ninja says. So all this was, was for nothing? Uh, yeah, I, I guess it was, you respond. You help the other ninja up. He grabs your hand and you pull him to his feet. Together, you head over to Master Takashi. You carefully and slowly release the different ropes, and Takashi becomes free. I am not happy about this, Takashi says, but... If you would like to redeem yourselves and learn our ways, come see me at the temple. We will find some work for you and eventually, uh, well, we might train you, I guess, Takashi says. Understood, the other ninja responds. You and the other meerkats help Master Takashi up after he stretches left and right and does a pretty cool back cracking. You and the other meerkats begin running through the forest once again, dodging around trees over rivers until you come back to the training academy. You walk through the town and then you enter the giant training arena in the middle of it. I must thank you, Master Takashi says to you and Ninja Yu. I am told that without you, I may never have been found. I would like to repay you by teaching you one of the most sacred techniques of my kind, the use of energy, or key as we call it. Master Takashi goes on to explain what life energy is. You're not sure if you have the same life energy in your human body, but in your meerkat body, you can start to feel it. Master Takashi points to different meridians, different centers where you hold your power. 
and as you focus on your body sitting under the tree, you start to be able to sense those meridians or those centers of power, like little pools of energy connected by long, powerful streams. Once you can feel the energy, you can will yourself to use it at different rates. For example, Master Takashi says, you can use all of the energy that would normally have been spread out through your day in a single minute. Since there are 1,440 minutes in a day, for that one minute, you can make yourself 1,444 times faster, stronger, and, well, just generally better, Takashi explains. But you must use the technique well, because after that minute, you will be incredibly tired, almost unable to move. I find that it's better to use this energy for very short periods of time. The more you use it, the stronger it becomes and the more energy you have. Allow me to demonstrate. The other meerkat ninjas carry a huge meerkat ninja dummy into the center of the room. Now this wooden dummy is basically the size of an entirely fully grown tree. Attack the dummy, Takashi orders. You walk up to the dummy, stand in the best fighting stance you can, and then you punch it as hard as you can. Your hand ends up hurting quite a bit, but the dummy doesn't break or crack or anything. Now, watch me, Takashi says. Takashi stands for a center, focuses their energy, and you almost feel a strange radiating pulse come off of him for just a moment. And in that moment, Takashi rushes towards the dummy faster than you can even see and punches it with incredible power and incredible strength. The dummy shatters into millions and millions of pieces that fly all over the training yard. Now, you try, Takashi says. Remember, only use it for a short time, or you will be entirely out of energy. Even now, I am quite tired from that. The other meerkat ninjas bring in two more dummies of exactly the same size. You and the ninja versions of you walk up towards the dummies. You close your eyes and you begin to breathe deeply and slowly. Whenever your mind wanders away from your breath, you bring it directly back. And as you breathe, you start to sense that powerful stream of energy once again and the meridians where it pools. You find that you can kind of squeeze the energy inside you and by relaxing, let it flow normally again. You reach into the energy and you try to compress it as much as you possibly can. As you compress it, you feel the energy rushing through your body. Your muscles pulse with incredible strength. You look at the dummy in front of you and you punch through it. Your punch moves so quickly 
and so powerfully that the dummy seems to explode as if it were ice, as if there were nothing there at all. You remember to relax the energy shortly afterwards, but even the amount that you've already used makes you feel pretty tired, like you really, really want to go to sleep. Uh, well, that's a really cool technique, you say, but I am exhausted. You make your way over to the meditation tree once again. Rest for now, Master Takashi says. You sit down against the tree and you lay back. As you lay down, you start to focus on your breath once again. With each breath, you try to relax the energy in your arms and your legs, allowing them to just fall into your lap or by your sides. And as you do, it feels as if you're sinking into a mattress, getting more and more comfortable with every breath. And as you become more and more relaxed, you allow your mind to wander. You allow it to seek out new ideas, new adventures, and new things to come. Good night, everyone.